What's up Norberg Nation? How's it going? Today's video, we're gonna talk about how to race different tire compounds. Over my years in karting, I distinctly remember one race where I had to switch classes each session. I'd go out in Rock Jr. early in the day, and then I'd go out in Rotex Jr. And now there's not much difference between each engine. The only difference was the tire compound that I was driving. The unfortunate part was I was more comfortable racing the Rotex Jr. So when I got into the Rock Jr., I was quite slow. The little bit of difference between a Mojo D1 and a Bridgestone was a big difference for me. And it actually affected my driving a lot because I was used to the harder Mojo compound D1. I struggled quite a bit when I drove the softer compound Bridgestone. So in today's video, I'm gonna help you guys understand the different driving styles for a softer or a harder tire. But before we get into that, we have to thank today's sponsor, which is Tillit Racing Seats. So if you guys follow me on my Instagram, you would have known I received a brand new Tillit P1 rib protector. This thing is awesome. They've updated the rib protector actually because they added this hard shell to the outside here. Um, and that's just a new update to it that actually helps out quite a bit. It's just an extra layer of protection and it helps the rib protector last just that much longer. But for those guys who haven't invested in a high quality rib protector, I'd suggest you get the Tillet P1 rib protector right now. In the beginning of my career, I always went with the cheaper rib protector option. The problem was every time I showed up to a rough racetrack, I was always worried that my ribs wouldn't last the whole weekend. Finally, later in my career, I upgraded to a Tillet P1 rib protector and I never had that anxiety ever again. It was something I was so used to, I was so surprised when I stopped worrying about it. From the time I put this thing on, I haven't had rib issues since. So for that clarity of mind and that extra thing not to worry about when you're at the racetrack, go get yourself a Tillet P1 rib protector. So again, thank you to Tillet for sponsoring this video and providing me with an awesome rib protector. But now let's get started with the video. So the first thing I wanna talk about is braking. Braking on a harder compound tire is probably the most difficult thing. The reason is when you go to brake, the tire doesn't really dig into the ground like a softer compound does. When you hit the brakes and lock up, the cart just tends to slide instead of actually slow down. So what you need to do when you're on a harder compound tire is make sure you're braking in a straight line. Now, obviously every track, there's a different line you gotta take into the corner, but even if you're bending the cart into the corner a little bit, the straighter, the better with these things. Look, there's no room for error on a hard compound. Any slight mistake you make going into the corner is gonna affect the time overall. The back end's always gonna be dancing going into the corner, so if you're on a harder compound, the best thing you do is brake in a very straight line. And also, you really wanna minimize lockups on a hard compound tire. Like I said earlier, it doesn't slow the cart down. You end up just skating past the corner, so you really wanna minimize those lockups going into the corner. This is why I always tell people, it's better to learn your braking on a harder tire because it maximizes your mistakes as you enter the braking zone. So when you're braking on a harder compound tire, you wanna make sure you're braking hard but not locking up. And then as well, making a straight line in the braking zone so that the cart doesn't wanna step out at all. Now on a softer tire, you have room for error. When you go into the braking zone, you can bend the go-kart into the corner. What does that mean? It means when you're braking, you're actually braking towards the apex. You can almost brake and turn when you're on a softer compound because the back end's not gonna step out on you. You get away with those little mistakes that you can make when you're on a softer compound. Now driving on a softer compound isn't just easier. You still have to brake a lot later than you would on a harder compound. You have to be pushing the cart really hard into the corner. Because you have that extra grip, it means you can go so much deeper into the corner and use that as you enter the corner. I know a lot of drivers that feel more comfortable braking on the harder compound because you get to brake a little bit earlier and everything's a little bit calmer entering the corner. But when you're on a softer compound, you have to be aggressive. You have to be going into the corner really deep, braking really hard. You don't have to be so afraid of locking up because you'll have that control entering the corner. You're also probably gonna be pointing your cart towards the apex in the braking zone because you're braking so late. You're gonna to have to start your turn as you brake for the corner. So when you go from a harder compound to a softer compound, just know that your braking is gonna be arced into the corner and you're gonna be braking extra late. The next thing we have to talk about is the racing line. And this changes quite a bit from a hard compound to a soft compound. When you're on a harder compound, your racing line has to be a lot straighter. What I mean is when you go into the braking zone, you have to make sure you make one turn for the corner and then you're straight on acceleration off the corner. What I mean by that is when you go into the corner, you have to make one 
turn for the corner, and then have a relatively straight line center off. On a harder compound tire, you're gonna go into the corner and turn in later for the corner than you would on a softer compound. Because of that, you're gonna be able to slow the cart down more and get the cart pointed in the direction you wanna go and accelerate earlier off the corner. You don't have the grip that you do on a softer compound, so you have to make it up by accelerating early off the corner. Because you don't have that grip, your minimum speed is gonna be lower. Because of that, you're gonna have to get on the gas earlier to make up that time difference on the exit of the corner. So to do that, you have to go into the corner and turn in a little bit later, have the cart pointed straighter off the corner, so that when you get back on the gas, you can get on it and not have to worry about the back end stepping out on the exit of the corner. The less input you have on the exit of the corner, the better, so that'll minimize the chance of the back end stepping out and maximize your acceleration off the corner. When you're on a softer compound, like I said earlier, you're gonna be bending that cart into the corner. So while a harder compound is gonna wait a little bit to turn into the corner, you're probably in the braking zone already turning into the corner. You can kind of cheat the cart into the corner by taking a shorter line, and now you have that extra bit of speed. Your engine isn't gonna be so slow in the center of the corner, so you don't necessarily have to worry about getting on the gas super early to maximize your acceleration off the corner. And if your cart isn't super straight on the exit, on a softer compound tire, it's okay because you can kind of muscle the cart back over to where you want it to be. Again, a softer compound tire is a lot more aggressive and a lot faster going to the corner. So because you're going in so much later and so much faster, that means your acceleration point is gonna be that much later and it means your turn in is probably gonna be a little bit earlier. So again, if you're on a hard compound, that's gonna be a late turn in and then an early acceleration with a straight line off of the corner. Where on a soft compound, you're gonna kinda of turn into the corner sooner, still apex at your same spot, accelerate later, and then try and make it straight line off the corner. And finally, the last thing we need to talk about is the steering input going into the corner. When you're on a harder compound tire, you have to be way smoother on your hands the entire time. A harder compound tire will punish you every mistake that you make. So if you're choppy on your hands, it's gonna result in a slower lap time. I've spoken on it in previous videos about pushing on the outside of the steering wheel, but this is where that really comes in handy. Whenever I'm on a harder compound tire, I'm always pushing on the outside of the steering wheel, trying to minimize any excessive input I put into the steering wheel. I'm trying to minimize the chances of the back end stepping out in the center of the corner and allowing me to have the most traction off the corner. Normally when you're on a harder compound tire, it's paired with a lower horsepower engine. So again, if any mistake you make is gonna maximize itself throughout the run. So really focus on having smooth hands and then pushing on the outside of the steering wheel going into the corner. It'll definitely help you on the harder compound tire and should decrease your lap time throughout the run. And when you're on a softer compound tire, like I said, it's a lot more aggressive. So your hands are gonna be a little bit choppier. I always tell drivers when I'm on a softer compound tire, if the cart doesn't turn, just keep turning because eventually it will turn. That's something about the softer compound that you get away with. You get away with being aggressive on the go-kart. You have to manhandle these go-karts on a softer compound. There's a lot more grip than you think is out there. So you have to be pushing the go-kart every corner and it's okay if you have to be a little bit choppy on your hands to get that done. Now again, this all comes on a spectrum. I'm not saying go out there and seesaw the steering wheel. I'm saying it's okay if you're a little bit more aggressive on your hands on a softer compound tire. You wanna make sure when you do turn into the corner, it's aggressive and it's strong. Because if it's not, the odds are the cart is just gonna buck back the other direction and you're gonna be washing out super wide off the corner. There's a lot of grip, so it's gonna wanna fight back in the center of the corner. And if you're not strong and aggressive on your initial input, it's gonna kick back. So you really wanna make sure that you're strong on the steering wheel when you're on a softer compound tire. And again, pushing on the outside of the steering wheel is really important on a soft compound as well. But it's super important that you're strong on the steering wheel and you fight the go-kart when it wants to kick back. I can speak from experience that there's many times that I'm driving where the cart wants to go the opposite direction of the direction I want it to go. But I fight through it. I keep my hand on that outside and push hard to keep the cart from wanting to step out. But again, when you're on a harder compound tire, you have to be light with your hands. You have to be super smooth and super direct in what you want to do with the go-kart. Push with that outside hand to minimize any chance of the go-kart snapping on exit. You want to minimize mistakes and minimize the chance of the go-kart stepping out. The only way to do that is to be super smooth with your hands. And now when you go to a softer compound tire, it's all a little bit different because because you can charge into the corner harder, you can be more aggressive on the steering wheel, and then you need that strength to hold the steering wheel from fighting back in the center of the corner. And so obviously there's a spectrum of tires and every different tire brand has their own unique characteristic. Now I could do an hour long video going through each individual tire and telling you what I feel is their distinct characteristic. 
But honestly, I feel like it always comes down to a harder tire or a softer tire. Now there's tires in the middle, but the majority of the time I either drive it one way or the other, and then sometimes I'll drive it in between. But regardless of the tire's unique characteristic, these are the ways that I'll drive, and it doesn't really change on what tire I'm driving. So just to help you guys out, I'll go through a few set of tires that I've driven. I'll let you guys know if it's a soft tire or a hard tire or something in between, just that you know the tire that you're on, you should drive this way. So the first one is an MG Yellow, which I always think is a soft tire compared to the MG Red, which is definitely on the other side of the spectrum as a hard tire. You also have the Comet tire, which is what they run in the IAMI Euro series. It's just the same as the MG Red. Um, it is, I think the MG Red, it's made by the same company. So the Comet tire is just as hard as the MG Red. The new LeConte Levanto tire, that's something we run in the United States. And I think the world is starting to run those at more of the rock competitions. And I would say that's a medium compound tire. I normally drive in between, you know, a hard compound driving style or a soft compound driving style. Depending on the amount of rubber that gets put down with this tire, that'll kind of change as I go through the weekend. So it's normally somewhere in the middle for the Levanto tire. And finally, for Rotax, you have the Mojo D1, the Mojo D2, and the Mojo D3. I don't think they run the Mojo D1 that much, but this is what I grew up racing on, and that's a super hard tire, so you have to be super precise in your driving style there. The Mojo D2 is still pretty hard um, compared to most tires, so it's somewhere in between you know, a hard driving style and a medium driving style. And then finally, the only other Mojo that I've driven is the Mojo D3, and that is a lot softer. That would be probably a medium to soft driving style. Um, it's definitely not a soft as the MG, but it definitely is a softer tire. Again, this is all my opinion on these tires and the different driving styles I take to the tires. I'm not claiming to be a scientist and I know exactly which compound is soft than the others, the sidewall, the blah, blah, blah. I'm just telling you the different driving style I use on this tire. If you like this video and racing videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. It allows me to get these sponsors in. It allows me to bring you guys this free, awesome information to help you guys out on your racing career. Make sure to comment down below any questions about your racing career that you want me to answer. Make sure to pick up your Norberg Nation merch. The link to that is in the description below. And then make sure to follow me on my Instagram and on my Facebook. That's where you'll get any updates on my racing career. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you at the next one.